Hey everyone, Justin Brawler here. I'm giving you my review of Aborto Naruto Next Generations episode 55, The Scientific Ninja Tool. And again, we're still world, and just from the pace in this episode, it was like we're very close into the, almost the climax of the story. But we saw some few add ons to a couple of few things to cover up, most likely the tuning exams, specifically the extent of the of the new generation students, and seeing more, but some more scenes between Nart, between and our Borto and Sasuke as the student as the newly formed student teacher relationship. The issue which is now started to forge. Starting with a before we move on, I'm gonna start with this whole the small scene that we have between Sasuke and Konohama, which I think for some, over the entire course of the story and the entire course of the Naruto franchise, these two characters rarely interact with each other. Almost either rarely or supposedly never. And then there was some point that Conan Howard did met, actually saw, uh, met Sasuke during the time during the original Naruto series, but actually fully met with them, actually fully talked with them. So just basically that cartoon where it was like, you just came on the account and that, yeah, I'm just telling you. Sasuke just came and just talked to Conan Howard telling me, hey, I'm training, the, I'm training your student Boruto, and we have to make a notification of the fact that he's going to be trained under me. So I think specifically for someone like him, like Sasuke, who's basically... I think unofficially called, but officially is known as one of the three dozen signing. And basically the shadow of the hidden leaf village in some in some way. And of course she also mentioned that he was being ready to go to survive being tra- trained under her while she was under his care, and he thanks him for that. Okay, and that's the father, he basically thinks the he actually thankful last as well. That's that's part of the father's side of you to see of him. He's thankful for Conharm or taking care of being taking good care of survivor during all that time. While he was still away. Uh, well, it's having his episode. Oh, there's also good to see some scenes between some of the new generation students, specifically the new Ichigo Cho formation with Shikida, Inojin, and Chojo. Lee Iwaki, not Iwaki, Ibiki. I think that's his name. I may forgot. Damn, I forgot the name with the. I know that well, there's Denki and Metal Lee, but I forgot the other guy's name for that squad. Those are we good to see them train. <clears throat> And seeing if I transfer from the move to, to the retelling, like, we know exactly which who's going to go fall in the second round, but I just can't wait to see the how the enemy's going to do seeing both Mel Lee and his squad actually fail. Fail in the exam. Let's we'll see the other three girls, the, the all three female squad. The only girl I can the camera name is Smyrna, and they all have the strategies now to deal with the red remaining three. How this is like Borto is the most like close range rider. So long distance attacks so basically is their best bet against him. While surrounding your hands, he's still learning the shining gum. Her shining gum is supposedly her most deadly part of her arsenal. So they had to sneak it behind her and use her blind side. And as for Mitsuki, right before we just thinking how to defeat that Mitsuki, the other two were like scared for that. She managed to somehow know all this stuff a little bit too much. I was like, kind of like, oh, was, okay, you're a little talking too much. There's some, I think, Samaria, you are going a little bit, little too, and you actually know a little bit too much. But she getting kind of scared. And as we also, get to, we also get to see the you know Chico Show formation, the new one. I keep calling him, but then again, there's you know, the new Chico Show formation with Auntie Tamari, is what Chojo calls her. As they're going based on their own, there's the just training scene. Tamari trained the new train this new three. So I see that like, Shikida as learning from tra- trained by the mom, who's uh who have been told some adventure fact that her brother Gara. And his students, his team, getting are going to come down to the June exams. Well, it gets to those three in a minute. And right before when she starts to, right before, at one point during the whole training, towards the end of it, right before when she could also grab her with his ninja, with his shadow position jutsu. Apparently, right, she was so close to the shadow, and the shadow was gone. But no, instead of, instead of like actually missing her, she actually dodged in a way where like, she needs the fan to actually avoid the shadow position. Which he bought to them. You almost got me on that one, but you were taking this seriously. You couldn't even have more if you were taking this seriously even more. But I can't help but if I look at that scene, scene tomorrow and using the fan as a way to dodge. It was like something. I was thinking, okay, you said this is your going against Tamari here, of all people. 10 10 with her pre- accuracy. Couldn't even hit Tamari during the tuning exams. What makes you think that you can actually get Tamari? But again, kind of the thing, we're dealing with t- Tamari's dealing with kids here. And one of them happens to be in her own son. You think she'll be at least leniently to train them. But no, she's going full fledged hardcore. And just basically just one shots them all to the end. 
he also meant, she also to, Tojo actually mentioned that uh, Tamari want, mentions Auntie Tamari that one of the students of the of the Hidden Sand Village happens to be Garrett's adopted son. So like he doesn't have it's never confirmed or mentioned that like, Garrett's either been married or has a wife at this point and he has to be soon to be pregnant. But it's announced that he has an adopted son. He died of the son, which we'll get to see where it is we get to see him close to the end of the episode. While all this is going on, we see most between Moshiki and his subordinates. By subordinate, and by his subordinates, and there is there's one more person from the, from the Kutsuki clan, but he wasn't seen in the actual movie. He was only here in the retelling. So we have one more subordinate to deal with. They're distracting about they couldn't. They were just talking about holding up Kagyu and the Divine Tree of Chakra, or the Divine Tree and the Fruit of Chakra, the Chakra Fruit. And explain how she had to send more attention to the planet, because she didn't have this much attachment to the planet. She could have been a lot more powerful than she already was, but there was some bit of attachment, most specifically to her children, so she betrayed them in the way. This leads to a scene to see both Killer B here, when both of them come down to Killer B. And just like the movie in your hand, there was a moment where was, we saw that towards the scene when the, when the villains meet up against Killer B and QB. They actually defeated him so easily, and as they did here in the, in the movie retelling. And during after that, we actually, we actually moved toward a hidden cloud village, to a hidden, hidden cloud, the hidden sand village, where Gaara and Kokoro are meeting over the three sand siblings. At least that's what they're basically going to be called, and that's sadly. <clears throat> My first look at these three characters, I think they're actually related, but since they're going to be part of it, since they're basically Gaara's, in a, in a way, they could be like Gaara's new sand, the, the hidden sand village is just sand siblings. <clears throat> how Gara, Conqueror, and Tamara were named back when they were kids. The only person we only get to name only one name of the three, which is the Shinki, <clears throat> which is the one with has the same face paint as Conqueror, but this is no, doesn't have any form of puppetry, but more likely black sand around. Even his his coat is wearing, actually it feels like it's sand, it's actually it's moving, so it's exactly half part of living sand, but it's not either the brownish sand that Gara used, or even golden sand, it's black sand. Maybe there's more to it somewhere on the line. We can see more of that. But we can see more understanding why his sand is black and compared to everybody else, compared to Gara's. Hopefully, we can see more of There's one person with a mask behind his sword, so it was like he's basically a sword master guy. And the girl with the bang cover like, right in the middle of her face. Don't know her name just yet, but apparently she's going to be mostly important. Hopefully, we can see more of her next episode. <clears throat> or forward and that further down the line, bud. My point, I feel like, but the point of the movie recap, we're not going to see the sand siblings for much, much later. Which is a shame, which is a shame, but I hope we get to see more, and hopefully next episode will be more clarification. And after the, after, they're taking, after they left, there's a scene between Shukuku, I want to point out this point here. During the scene there, Gara is con contacting with Shukuku, the one tails. The thing is, though, wasn't Gara potentially removed so much as Shukuku removed from Gara at the time during the game of Naruto Shippuden. And Gara's on, especially not with Jin Shurike anymore. But he still has somewhat of the chakra in, of Shukaku in his body. I'm not really exactly sure because I like what after he was removed during the whole thing with the Minera, after the whole thing in the whole Fourth Century War when Shukaku went in the to pull up the chakra from Mon from that one, Obito. Gara was the only one who actually had contact with Shukaku's chakra and was able to pull it. So, essentially, at some point, there's some point after the war was over that Shukuku and Gara bond together again towards, like, he can kind of contact with Shukuku again, like, just how Naruto and Killer B were. I'm not saying that, I think, I was pretty sure that these two are no longer together at this point. Gara's no longer Chin Shuriki, apparently, he still has contact with Shukuku. If I'm missing something here, let me know in the comments down below, but I'm pretty sure there's no way that Gara's no longer, Gara is no longer Chin Shuriki anymore. So there's really no point from having him shoot, having Sukaku with him. But then we don't see them the villains go after Gaara since he's the only focus, the only, the only technically living Chinchuriki is B and Naruto. But still having Gaara slamming contact with Sukaku was surprising to see. And, uh, well, so I'm pretty much is there anything, is there anything else? Oh, yeah, there's also. I thought there was a bit of a nod here to the point of the fact that Sasuke's music and arm. Excuse me, but I, did, I had dinner before the dust. After the episode, after the fourth angel was over, Naruto and Sasuke lost both lost their arms. 
and Sasuke was actually given a chance to get the replacement only Naruto has. <clears throat> unfortunately, well, actually not unfortunately, Sasuke had to deny it. And when Boruto asked how many weeks, I don't know when the weeks of my dad, he can't tell me. And I was like, I can't, I don't have enough fingers to count how many weaknesses he has. Basically, he can go like above 10, he can go above 10 for weaknesses from Naruto back then. But no, he can't, he doesn't have enough fingers to do that. So he's missing basically, he's missing the left arm. Naruto had the right arm prosthetic, well, Sasuke is missing the left arm. After all the time, he said he still refuses to get the prosthetic arm, even with Sakura, who managed to do surgery. By this point, he still refuses. And the reason Martin wants to know the re and reason the bunch of game and both reasons what the weaknesses are, he tells him the fact that Sasuke tells Boruto that he was a pathetic loser all the time. He was a pathetic loser as a kid, but managed to become Hokage by overcoming his own strength. By overcoming his weaknesses, by his own strength. He basically putting a nod to the movie. Sasuke said, you don't have to know about the Naruto back then. You have to know the you have to know the Naruto back then. Naturally, he said, you have to know the Naruto now. But you have to know the Naruto when he got to where he came to be. But you have to know the Naruto, he went from the loser to he was to, the, to become the seventh Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village and eventually become the hero of the Hidden Leaf and the hero of the, and the savior of the world. And as for the next episode, we'll be going to see a change in the tuning exams. Instead of the first exam being the moot, okay, I'll get more to how the first part of the exam is going to be from the, from the episode's episode. Also, we're going to see more characters, specifically from the Hidden Stone Village, making an appearance. Three from the Hidden Mist, and it looks like all of the Kages have made their appearance before Gaara did. <clears throat> or maybe they show after the phase one. Because I'm pretty sure most of the Kages will show up probably for round three of the exams, which is based on the tournament setting. But that's until next week, and with the villain still looming closing by, we can imagine that things are going to shut down pretty soon. I'm not too sure how long this boot is going to last. But with the villains after taking down B, we're very close to the climax of that. So, until then, leave a like, subscribe, comment, share with a friend, and I'll see you in the next time for the next video. Laters!